Welcome back to the Keegan and Company podcast. For those who are new to the show, my name is Keegan Hipgrave. And if you haven't already, could I get you to jump over, give us a little like and subscribe on whatever platform you listen to this podcast on. It's a really great way for us to grow the platform, um, enhance the production. And I just have some great quality guests like I have today um, in this episode. I'm joined by a professional rugby league player for the Sydney Roosters and Australian Gillaroos. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for having me. Um, what a morning. What a beautiful morning we had. <laughs> Some would say. We, um, we, we went to Active Gym in Burley, which we, we've done a few sessions in there before. We came back, had a little ice bath. Now we're sitting doing a potty. How are you feeling? Yeah, really good. Really good. How would you go on the set? It was good. The first session I've ever done at Active. Um, was brutal. Uh, told all the girls about it. No one will come train with Keegs. <laughs> but, uh, but we, me, you, um, Julie Robinson, we did a sesh about like maybe a month ago. Yeah. A couple months ago. Yeah. And okay. solid. It was the worst thing I've ever done. So good though, but like so tough. I, and like, cause we, we were talking about it beforehand cause um, me and Julie, we, were gonna, we did a session before doing the podcast and I messaged you and I said, you want to jump in? You're like, yeah, hundred percent. And it's usually pretty good. Like to, like, to, like, to be honest, to be honest, it's like, it's a good mixture of like cardio, like good mixture of weight. Mm. And then um, when we got in there, I looked up on the board and I was like, oh. I was like, this is gonna be a great. I was like, this is gonna be a solid sesh. And I remember looking over at you and you're just like shaking your head, just looking at me. This is first session back after having like all of the back end of footy season off. So it was a nice little welcome back to training. Yeah. But even like even this morning, like this morning was such a such a beautiful way to start the day. Tough. Yeah. But good. Yeah, it was great. How's your, how's your training going now? Like obviously we had the festive season, we're going back into it, first session back after a little bit. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, I've been training with Jamie Chapman and Taryn Aiken at the moment just at Chugan Footy Fields. Sick. They've got a little gym, they let us go there. It's sort of just easy letting, like being able to do our own thing in our own space. Um, but it's fun. We run, we gym together. So it's been real good. Do you try and go with the girls? I like try and train with the girls yeah, usually? Yeah, for sure. I was training by myself, but it's just easier when you're doing it with the girls. Me and Taz are doing the same thing for roosters. So it's like, I might as well just do it together. In the running, like you need that other <laughs> mentality there pushing you. So yeah. yeah, the head noise would be real. And like I imagine it'd be so much, yeah, it'd be so much nicer to train with the girls, like with the yeah. crew, like you ever said, we tried to get Chapo in there this morning, but she wasn't having a bar of it. <laughs> like I said, everyone refuses to come. <laughs> like, that's not the ca- that's not what I want. I want to try to get the crew in here. That's all right. Uh, we'll get there. Um, so what's what's gonna what's training gonna look like going forward? Like you've got the new season coming up before NRLW starts. What does that look like? Yeah, so um I'm playing up in the QRL comp up he- here for Tweed. Um so I usually fly down and play Harvey Norman, but that comp is being played at the same time as an RW mm. next year. So there's no comp for the girls in New South Wales at the moment um, before Origin, which is just such a letdown for all the New South Wales team. Because so, so the Queensland will have a yeah. season before, but the New South Wales Yeah, will. so Origin's just, honestly, it's going to be pretty woeful. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's not where it should be at the, at the moment, but just very lucky for me that I'm living up here. I get to play up here. Um, and But I feel for the girls that are living down in New South Wales that can't just move up here and play. Would that give an advantage to the Queensland girls, 100%. do you reckon? For yeah. sure. It's like a nine-round comp and girls are expected to play nothing. Yeah. Maybe like an extended origin camp, but yeah. Nothing on match fitness. Would many of the girls come up here? Yeah, girls are definitely trying, but... Um, one, there's a point system, two, very hard, like limited spots now because it's like everyone's already started training yeah. and three, girls can't put off jobs. Work, so yeah. <laughs> it's not like NRLW where we're getting a bit of a contract and we can relocate. There's no relocation. Mm. Like, so, yeah. But they didn't have that. No teams had a comp before Origin last year, yeah? You guys just um, went straight into Origin? No, we did have, you did have yeah, one? Harvey Norman was at the same at the start of the year and um, the BMD comp was at the start as well. Mm. So girls were playing a comp and then going into origin 
Um, but yeah, this year they've decided to move Harvey Norman under NRLW, which is a good idea mm. um, because it allows girls who don't make NRLW every year, um, like every week, to mm. go back and play and, you know, prove themselves back into the um, NRLW team the next week, Sick. which is so good. And I love that idea. But if you're going to do that, like, you know, think about a comp at yeah, the start. But, but that would um having the, the comps run side by side, that would just mean that there'd be there's a lot more depth coming through yeah. the teams, right? And like girls are actually trying to to crack those yeah, teams, yeah. Hundred percent. But yeah, I think it's still just a lot of planning that's gotta go behind the scenes and um just trying to, you know, Origin is our biggest game of the in like our footy calendar. So mm. we should be building and structuring up competition around it mm. not, but yeah so many like different processes that need to happen that I probably don't know about so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm making a, it work yeah. <laughs> just happy to be here yeah. how um there's that conversation like I I spoke to Corbin um back to about on our podcast that we did last year um there was a conversation around girls either playing before the boys or having a standalone game. Which one Which one do you prefer? Do you have one that you lean for? For NRLW? For NRLW. Um, State of Origin. State of Origin. Origin. Yeah. I would love to play before the boys. Yeah. I think there's this whole stigma around that we want standalones. Yeah. Which is good. I get that we do, like, we sold, I think it was like 16,000 wow. at Townsville, which was so amazing. Sick. And yeah. I love that. Um, and I get that the boys sell out a crowd and... You know, there's a whole new market for us, but mm. it would be great to have it on the same night. I think we love playing with all the boys. Yeah. So we get to watch the boys after. Yeah. A few drinks after the yeah. game, you win, it's, watch the crew. Yeah, good energy. So, but maybe one one year, that'd be yeah, great. That'd be cool. We, um, when I was in, I think it was like under 20s or under 18s, we played uh, before the State of Origins, like the, our, like the junior State of Origin, yeah. before, before the main side. And we had like... 30, 40,000 watch like came to watch because yeah. everyone's just going to come before the game. So yeah. they're watching us and like it was for an 18 year old, 20 year old kid. Like that's so sick. Yeah. Or even for anyone like coming into it. Everyone, like, everyone loves a double header. Everyone yeah. loves a double header. And then you can take that into like the NRLW, NRL games. Like mm. I don't see why you wouldn't have like the girls playing before the boys, mm. especially if it's the same sides playing against each other. Like yeah. that would be such a cool thing to do. Like it used to be back in the day when, when we were in under twenties, the, that there was like an under twenties competition. Like every NRL team had a under twenties competition and then they would play before the NRL side. Yeah. And it was unreal. Like yeah. it was so cool. And you're like, yeah, people to come watch because they see the up and coming talent. And then you see like, even now with like women in sport and the NRLW teams like that are pumping, like, even mum and dad here before when we were, when we were doing the ice baths outside, she, mom's like, I, um, she's like, I don't know, I'm not really huge on footy, but like I love watching people that I know, and she's like, so I'm gonna come watch you. I'm like yes, <laughs> you'll have you'll have some fans like when you when you come out. Love it. How um how are you going? Because you live here on the Gold Coast, and it's a beautiful day. It's always yeah. it's always beautiful. It hasn't been that beautiful the last couple of days, but it's um you're living here on the Gold Coast, but then you'll travel to Sydney for the Roosters. Yeah. How do you find that? How did that come about? Um, so I moved up here with my boyfriend. He moved end of, when did we go? End of last year. We've been here for about a year now. Sick. Um, and we, yeah, just, just, he was decided he wanted to move up here and um, he was just going to come up for three months, come back to the Central Coast. And um, I sort of got home from World Cup in, 2022 mm. and um I was just like oh fuck I might as well go to the country <laughs> it's too good like honestly I felt like if I I was living at home on the central coast and I felt like if I moved out I would have just set up my life there played for the roosters or like all my life which is I have no problem doing that but yeah. I've never wanted to be based on the central coast my whole life yeah um, can't afford Sydney at the moment, like especially the east. Mm. It's obviously expensive. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so when he moved up here, I was like, well, we've got girls up here. Half of our team is from Queensland. They relocate. Like, why can't I do that? Mm. Um, so sort of just didn't really tell anyone at the club. I might have <laughs> told my coach. Yeah. And then I just moved. And it's... I'm so grateful I did and just sort of made that decision. It was such a 
I'm such an overthinker and uh, very indecisive and I was just like, fuck this, like, let's just do it. Yeah. Because um, if I don't do it now, I'll never, do, I'll never have the chance to do it again. Sure. And my best friend lives up here and she's been trying to get me up here for like the last three or four years. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't because of footy commitments. And so I'm so happy I did because like my mum just sold the house on the Central Coast. Yeah. I would have had to be out like now. And then um, like the whole Harvey Norman situation. Yeah. Like there's no footy down of there. Of course. Hey. So like – the stars really aligned for me. I'm not spiritual yeah. one bit, but I think someone was looking out for me and it was just the right place at the right time and, yeah, everything worked out. I think, like, I think that, that I think about that all the time. Like, you just make a decision and things will just work yeah. out, like, 100%. Yeah. And everything sort of fell into my lap with, like, a job and mm. um, just, like, living arrangements. So it was just so stupid if I didn't leave. I... Uh, I think I gave you I did I think I might have given you a ring and mm. I was like, Hey, can I have a job <laughs> <What> ability? <laughs> yeah, come on down, mate. <laughs> yeah. And then you were like, Yeah, for sure, let's do it. And yeah, I got a job for what ability up here and then um told you guys my situation that I would be relocating back to Sydney for footy during our um NRW period because I'll I moved down there from like June till October in season. And then um, I could just work down in Sydney. Yeah. And, like, everything just seriously worked itself out. So it was, it was just a no-brainer to move. But that would, be, that would be pretty tough for a lot of girls in a semi-professional, professional system, yeah, where you're training at such a high level mm. but you also need to work around, you also need to train. Like, yeah. how... How do you find that balance and have you seen any girls that have struggled with that balance? Yeah. Well, I definitely was struggling with it at like when I was coming into the footy season. I had no idea how the girls around me were doing it. Mm. Um, when I first came on to like the Harvey Norman scene slash NRLW, I was 18, 17, 18. And I remember like going to training going like, what do you girls all do for work? <laughs> yeah. Izzy's and everyone on the coast, they were like, we're school teachers or first, um, there's a, the um, the aid teachers. First aid? Yeah. yeah not first aid. No. <laughs> first aid. Um, teacher's aid. Teacher's aid. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and all they work for their family. And at the time I was doing bar work and... Um, so it was just, it was a very... Imagine doing bar work <laughs> and then like rolling into training. Well, yeah. So I had to stop because I was 18. I was working till like 3 a.m., 6 a.m. Mm. and doing like overnight shifts and I wasn't really sleeping. I was playing terrible, terrible footy. Yeah. Um, right before I got a contract, I was a dev player. Mm. And yeah, just playing such shit footy. I realised it was like because I was lacking sleep. Yeah. So I had to quit and um, lucky for me, my dad, he works for himself. He's a lawyer. So I asked him for a job and I was his receptionist. Yeah. Um, Imagine if he said no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, nah, nah, probably not. Well, he had popped the question a couple of times. He tried to t let me like, tried to convince me to take over the business and I've got no degree under my wings. Mm. But um, yeah, I didn't want to do that. But I was just like, sweet, I'll take the secretary job. And, yeah, I worked for him for about a year, I think, my first year of um, an RRW. And that really helped out because I was having to – I was on the coast. I was having to leave the Central Coast by 2 p.m. to get to training by, like, 3.34. And what job is going to allow me to do that? Mm. And I wasn't earning nowhere near enough to, like – Yeah. I had to be working full time. And – so, yeah, it was it was so, so tough. And then so when I was making the decision to move to Queensland, I was like, well, I don't want to let a footy fully take over my life if I am only part like a semi-professional yeah, athlete. I love it. You're very it. much lifestyle as well. Yeah. yeah. And like I absolutely love it, but I'm not going to let it consume me where I'm in a, like a shit environment where I don't want to be. Mm. And I love the Central Coast. I love going back and visiting, love my friends, but I just didn't want to be there my whole life. Yeah. And that was just – it would have been stupid to give up moving up here. Um, so, yeah, I'm just so happy everything worked out. And yeah. So how did the development contract 
come about? Because you first started at the Roosters. Yeah. You've, you've been Roosters the whole time. Yeah. So how did that come about? What, what was the conversations there? Yeah. So it was tough. So I first started playing footy when I was 16, 17. Yeah. Um, I was playing in a local nines comp on the Central Coast and I was playing for Berkeley Vale. Um, I got picked up by Newcastle Knights. They asked me to come trial for Tasha Gale and then I played there two years at Tasha Gale. It was nine aside and 11 aside. Yeah. And then after that, I went into Harvey Norman and that was my first time like playing 13 aside for me. Mm. And it was so different and like I was playing with the women's. I was just completely out of my league mm. and I was just freshly turned 18. Did you have a background in touch or anything? Yeah. 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 So that, was that your main sports growing up? Yeah, so Don't I was mean. a touchy netballer. Um, I swam, nippers, Clubbies. like I did absolutely everything, yeah, athletics. Um, but yeah, a lot of touch and netball, which touch. That, that would cross over pretty nicely. Yeah, touch really like created the fundamentals that I needed to know for footy. And I, I think if I didn't play that, I wouldn't be here where I am today. Well, I think all the girls say that the the girls with a touch background like cross over so well. Yeah. Like you can see it in the skill. hundred percent. Yeah. Like. It just helps so much, just the basics and yeah, so grateful I played that sport. Yeah. yeah. So but you came into 13 aside? Yeah, came into 13s and was playing Harvey Norman at 18 for the Central Coast Roosters. Um, and I was playing terrible. I was <laughs> I was yeah, I don't I don't know. I think I was working that bar job and, you know, partying a little bit, just fresh 18 and footy wasn't my priority at all. I was just sort of – I think I was just doing it because I'd always done sport on weekends mm. and I've grown up like that. So I just played. Yeah. Um, and then I scraped a development contract somehow and um, John Strange was my coach, who's still my coach now. And so I was dev, a development player, and, yeah, got through that. That was fun. It was a nice sort of – introductory to NRLW because I had no idea what it was before. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, I was like, oh, this, this could be like cool to play. And then the following year, the next year played Harvey Norman. I was 19, I think. And um, wasn't any good again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're being humble or not. No, like. honestly, I was shocking and um, yeah, like, John Strange, he pulled me aside and he he was like, Liv, like, to be honest, I'm not even considering you for an NRLW contract because you're playing shit footy. Really? <laughs> yeah. And um, at the time I had a lot of family stuff going on and, um, yeah, just stuff wasn't really good at home. And I, th I it was at the start of training he pulled me aside and um, I – just remember after having that conversation, I went to train again and I just started bawling my eyes out. Oh, you poor bugger. And then I left training. I just – I got in my car and because we were on the coast, I just went home and um, Strangey, he was – rang me the next day and he was like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to make you upset. And um, it was so funny we laugh about it now but, I, yeah, I just said like, you know, I just had a lot going on and it was, it was so hard to hear like the honesty because like I was just – it was, yeah, I was just playing terrible. I knew I was and um, I knew what I wanted and I think, like, the hard thing, like, the hardest thing about trying to, like, chase something you want is acknowledging that you want it yeah. and then trying to push to the, through that, like, fear of failure yeah. and that's what was sort of holding me back at the time. And then um, the last – I think it was, like, the last three rounds of Harvey Norman – uh, we had like our hardest games and I played really, really well. And then I just scraped a contract and um, that it was for the 2021 season. And then COVID happened, got postponed and that's when we had the two seasons in one year. Yeah. Anyway, um, I wasn't even supposed to start for 2021 season um, but a girl, Roxy Murdoch, she, her husband plays for the Warriors Anyway, he got relocated up to Queensland, so she had to move with her family. For the bubble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. COVID bubble. So she had to leave the Roosters and she would have been our starting back row. 
So she had to leave. And then that's the only reason why I started round one. Wow. Anyway, Strangey was like, Liv, you've got a lot to prove. Yeah, wow. Games. Yeah. So it was just like a whole roller coaster getting there. And then I just remember thinking before round one, I, was, I wasn't upset anymore or, or anything. I just remember thinking like, fuck it. Like I literally have nothing to lose Let's here. go. Like have nothing to lose whatsoever. Um, I just have to do my best. Rewinding to that conversation, was there a shift in mindset after that conversation? Like, yeah. was it a was it a like, okay, well, I'm not getting picked. Like, let's go, or was it almost like a feel sorry for yourself? Like, well, I'm not. Like, what, what, where was your head after that conversation? It was. It was definitely like I didn't feel sorry for myself. It was more of a fuck this. Like, let's prove yeah. everyone wrong, and. Like Strangey at that point, he was like, I know, because Strangey was my first um, coach in the nines mm. for Berk the Val and I played Oztag and touch with his daughter Jazz. Yeah. So he's known me since I right. was young. You've so got he, a good relationship. Yeah. yeah. So he's, and he knew my brother and he just knew what I was capable of. And so before round one, he was, um, he was just like, I know what, I know what you can do. Like, fucking do it <laughs> that's like like that's the reason he's having the conversation yeah. right he's not having the conversation just to make you feel bad <laughs> like, yeah. like he's having the conversation because he know how good you can actually be yeah and i don't know if he felt bad about making me cry the previous <laughs> year but um but yeah and then i just remember like in the tunnel i was just like well, i honestly don't have anything to lose like i don't want to let the girls around me down and i think being around such professional girls yeah. like Especially Izzy, I always look up to her because she is such a professional. Yeah. And it's like, I don't want to let her down. How, how so? What, what does she do that makes her so good? She is just so switched on and just knows when to switch on. But she's just, when you watch her play and when you're playing with her, she's just someone that I know would never give up for anyone. Like mm. she, even if she's absolutely gassed on the ground, she's just the player that will always take that run, will always take that hard hit up. Like uh, I just think she is just the descript, like how I would define an athlete. Really? Yeah, honestly. Um, so I definitely didn't want to let her down and the girls around me and – the round one of when I debuted, we got flogged by Broncos, but I played pretty well. Yeah. I, I thought I didn't play well because we didn't win. Yeah. But um, I played really good and I think it was just going off the back of that high. I just played really well the next few rounds and I had a really good season, the um, 2021 season, and then – made origin and then played well the next season and then made the World Cup. So huge! it, it was just a fucking massive flow on effect and I, I just – I can't – I'm still amazed at how everything sort of worked out and, yeah, where I am today. I love the progression of like not feel – like not – feeling like you're good enough like yeah. or like not and, and probably like you said it perfectly like not having the evidence to back it up where it's just like I haven't done it yet like I'm not there mm. yet but saying that you're like what 18 19 years old like you're like yeah. you're fresh yeah. fresh coming into it to having the conversation ripping in like I imagine I couldn't imagine how hard you would have worked to get like in to get to the round one spot yep. then going origin then going Aussie world <laughs> cup like that's huge yeah it was insane and I think the hardest thing was like after round one, it was like, fuck, all right, was that a fluke? Yeah. <laughs> and like, or, and then after the first season, going into the second season, I'm like, well, no one knew who I was. So maybe that's why I played good because they didn't know what to expect. Yes. But now they know who yeah. I am and how I play. So how am I going to go into this season? Yeah. And I do think about that going into next season. I'm like, well, everyone knows how I play now. So, you know, like how do I be better from the previous seasons? Um, but now it's sort of knowing what I've achieved and like always trying to better that. Yeah. And I think just having the right people in my corner and the right people around me and Strangey really like guiding me. Yeah. He really fucking did a lot for me. So, and, um, just shaped me and molded me into the player I am today mm. on and off the field. So, cause there is like that happens all the time with like, 
uh, young players, and I've only seen it in the NRL space. Um, I haven't taken that much notice in the NRLW space, but like guys will come in, they'll have an unreal debut season. The first season, it's so good because no one knows what to expect from yeah. them. And then the second, third year, more video crew are getting around it. They know how to yeah. shut them down. It's hard, like it's it's a hard thing, and then you might lose like lose confidence. But it's you said it so perfectly, like getting better, having good crew around, and just constantly like working on parts of your game. Like, yeah. Like you're predominantly back rower. Um, I was the exact same when I was coming through, but didn't have probably the mindset to like. Obviously, we kept thinking yeah, getting better, getting better, getting better. But like you're, you seem like really dialed in to like work on your craft, like pick up little tricks along the way and you're how old are you now 20 22 about to be 22 22 <laughs> about to be 23 in a couple of days i think you'll be 23 yeah. by the time this airs yeah. um but like you've got so much time like imagine yeah. what 10 years of like compounding like i there's a quote where it's just like um layers of paint that build a mountain yeah. so like every layer of paint is like an action or like um, turning up for training early, like all the stuff that um, yeah. Isabel Kelly does, like, you know, constantly doing things. And then after like one year, two years, five years, a decade, imagine how good you could be after 10 years of doing that stuff, right? Yeah. So cool. Yeah, it's insane. And I just, I still think about it and everything that I've sort of achieved, it's seriously been in the last two years. Mm. It's insane to me, but um, I just, I do thank the people that I had around me and a massive, it was such a good culture. It still is. It's such a good culture at the Roosters and I think that's why it's so hard to leave. Yeah. Um, I don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did sign another two years but, you know, a lot of people when I moved up here thought I would play up here. Yeah. It would make sense but it's like, well, I don't want to start again what I have down there mm. and I still have so much growth to happen down there before I could even think about moving on. So And you've got such a good crew of yeah. girls. I remember coming to the captain's run last year <clears throat> um, and, like, obviously you've got such a good crew in there, like Isabel Kelly, you've got Corbin, Jess Surges, yourself, um, Keely Davis, like mad crew. And I remember coming yeah. in and watching it and you guys are, like, having so much fun. Like you're taking the piss out of each other, you're kicking the balls at each yeah. other. Like, <laughs> and I was like, that would be such a fun environment to be around, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it's the best. And we recruited Keels, um, Keely Davis and Millie this year. Millie Boyle as well. And it's honestly been the best with having them in there as well because they just slot right in. Everyone that we recruit, we're recruiting on culture as well as skill. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's – and the guy that's running it, John Strange, like he's the one creating that culture, making sure it's right off the field before we even get on the field, which is just so important in the women's space. What kind of stuff does he do for culture? I think just making sure everyone is on the same page um, and obviously you, you'd love to get to know someone before, you know, this, you sign them, but that's mm. not always the case. Mm. But just – I don't know how he does it, but I think everyone, it's not just him personally, but like coming from the girls that have been at the Roosters for the last few years, it's like we're open enough and social enough to be like, hey, like how are you going? And yeah. making sure they really feel welcome because they're obviously a part of our team now. Like we need them involved and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how our culture is so good, but I love it there and. I always think, <clears throat> um, not always think, but I have thought about before of how you girls have such a stack side. <laughs> like like how you girls can afford having like international players, like state of origin players, like it must just be the culture, right? Yeah. A lot of people say that, but if you really think about our team before World Cup, me, Keely Joseph, who isn't there anymore. She just went to the Bronx, which we're all so devastated about yeah. losing her um, just because we love Keely. We love yeah. her so much. Uh, it's such a big loss for me. Um, but, like, yeah, before World Cup, me, Keely, Keely Joseph, who else was there? Like, we weren't international players. True. So, you know, we're just staying at our club that we were there the previous year. Like we want to stay there because yeah. we love that club. Mm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how Roosters do it. 
It's what? not my problem. I'm just happy. Yeah. <laughs> That's not yeah. It's staying in your lane. What do they um? Do you know much about like their junior pathways? Like, do they have junior pathways coming through for roosters? For roosters, yeah. Um, yeah. Keely Joseph was the first female to go through Tasha Gale mm. to go through the ranks. So. Um, Tasha Gale and then Harvey Norman and then NRLW, which is such a good achievement. Yeah. Um, but yeah, their their pathway system is getting is so good at the moment. Actually, I didn't play Harvey Norman there because I don't think they had a Harvey Norman team. Yeah. I mean, a Tasha Gale team at the time, um, but they do now, and the Tasha Gale teams always makes the grand final the last couple th- like three years. Yeah. So yeah, they're killing it at the moment. Um. Interested to see how they'll go now. What do you think uh, 2024 will look like for the girls? Like, obviously, I thought you girls were the favourites last year. Um, and then I don't mean, to, don't mean to mention the war. But salt in the wound. Uh, salt in the wound. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, like, what do, you, what do you take away from last season? Because obviously got knocked out in the semifinals, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you take away from – or have you, did, have you done much reflecting on, on the semifinal or have you spoken about it? Uh yeah, so we have. Move on. We have. I haven't watched the game. I can't. I don't even want to think about the game. Um, but I think it was. It wasn't a, like a cockiness thing, and I think people gravitate towards that, thinking that we're a cocky team, but we're honestly not. We no. prepare each week as if we've never won before, or it's just a brand new slate. Um, I think. We were the first few rounds. We were winning like by a massive margin, and uh, I think personally that it in the back end it was like the grind and the fitness that we didn't have yeah. because we were like we were beating teams by like ten, twenty points, mm-hmm. which we didn't have to go back and forth like set for set. Yeah. And so when it when that mattered in the back end of the season, because our season is so short, we didn't have that match fitness. Yeah. That's what I think personally for, from a whole team point of view. That and also Titans were just so hungry for it. Yeah. And uh, like we know what it feels like to be the underdogs going into a semi final. Like we knocked out the Broncos when we won. Mm. So like I know exactly what it feels like and I love being in that position yeah. because no one expects you to win and you've got no pressure on yourself. So like hats off to Titans because they fucking played it out of their skin. Good, yeah. Um, but. Yeah, we, we have so much to work on. Just little little things happened, you know. We had a lot of injuries in key positions and which sucked, which really let us down. But, yeah, it's a brand new year. What are you looking, forward, year. What are you looking forward to? Um, honestly, just playing inside Jess again. Yeah. I love playing with I Jess. I love that combination, hey. Yeah, I think it... I just, I, it would be so sad if she was to ever leave me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. So um, we have such a good, a good combo going and, we you know, we play Origin and um, Jill is together. So it's very, very rare that we're not playing next to each other. Well, rare just to be in the same club side, State of Origin side and Aussie side and playing in on the same side. Yeah. That yeah. must be so rare. It's insane. So I don't know if we're just getting in together because we've got a good combo <laughs> <laughs> don't ever leave <laughs> honestly but um when she wasn't in because she was injured the back end of our season that was really tough because i had just been so used to playing with jess mm. so yeah that was really hard for me i felt like i didn't have enough time to sort of get combos right with other girls which sucks um but yeah new year hopefully everything will do you and do you and Jess um, do much work like on certain plays, certain moves, like connections during training and throughout the year? Like, what are you guys doing together? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Well, I know how Jess plays. Like, she's obviously so so hard to stop. Yeah, and girls don't want to get in front of her, or they can't get in front of her because yeah. she's so strong. Yeah. So uh, I just know what she can do and what is the perfect way to get her through where when we had other girls in her position when Jess was injured like Frezzy and um and Bridie they're very they're different center players they're not as built as Jess um and I just didn't really adapt to that which was probably my fault but (laughs) but yeah like me and Jess have a 
a good little connection. I just love knowing the way she plays and um, such a good defender as well. Like just because she's so aggressive. Yeah. Who are the um? Who are the role? Who are the girls that you look up to? Not only at the Roosters, but also in Chilaroos, also in State of Origin for the um for the Blues. Like who are you looking up to? Honestly, like all the girls. Yeah. They're so professional. I think um that's really helped me. Like not only just at the Roosters, but being in those professional environments have really helped me try and um sort of like help me with that I like imposter syndrome a little bit yeah I felt like everything happened so quickly and it was just like a sensory overload I was like holy shit I don't deserve this and because it all happened at once I like such I felt like such an imposter Mm. um so I think being in those environments and being around such professional women um it really helps you build confidence within yourself that you deserve to be here if you're like you're standing next to these girls. And the perfect key example, like obviously Izzy, but Emma Tonegato, absolute freak. Mm. Like she, I think the girls that are come from sevens, even Yaz, Yaz Clydesdale, um, Loz, bit of a loose unit, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. very professional as well. Yeah. Um, the girls that come from Aussie Sevens because their program is so hectic, they are just so drilled with professionalism and like so fit and they want to be there and um, it's just so competitive. And yeah. I think that's what is really leading the way. Like if you're competitive in the women's space, like you'll get there. You talked about in, like imposter syndrome and not feeling like probably good enough at the, at the start. Do you think that just comes down to a confidence thing? Yeah. At the end of the day? Yeah, 100%. I think if you're not confident in yourself, then you're going to always feel like that. And it's such a hard thing to just tell someone to be confident. And especially within our short seasons, like the first season I played was six rounds. How was I supposed yeah, yeah, to be confident after six 70-minute games? Yeah. Like it's insane. It's what, maybe like a quarter of the boys' season? Mm. And so – it's very hard to just not think you fluked the year. Mm. Um, but, yeah, that just comes down to confidence and just working on those one percenters at training and making sure you're really drilling into those things and doing everything right to make sure you just, like, perfect it on the field. I was going to say, how, how do you build confidence? How, how do you think you build confidence? Is it through doing all the one percenters at training? Is that what you think? Yeah, for sure. I think also now, like, moving into a new sort of leadership role – I've been in the leadership team at the Roosters the last couple of seasons now and having that sort of like people looking up to me, which I've never really thought about it until recently, has really built my confidence. Mm. So I'm like if I'm not confident in myself, that's just going to make girls who are fresh on the scene not confident at all. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I think just working really hard at training really builds my confidence. Always doing what I preach, mm. you know, if I'm yelling at girls to work harder and, you know, not be slacking off in fitness, then yeah. I obviously can't be slacking <laughs> yeah, off. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But if you had, like, uh, like some young girls coming through, because obviously the women's space is growing, right, and and it's so cool to see the grassroots. Like, when I'm sure when you were coming through, probably NRL W wasn't really a thing, right? Like I had no idea what it was. No idea. So no what idea. would be some advice or tips or strategies for like young girls coming through? If you like, because they're obviously looking up to you. They're looking up to a bunch of the girls now. They're like, like I want to be Liv Koenig when I grow up. Like that's something that I want to do. Like what would be some things that they could take away when they were a kid coming into it? Is there any things that you could like that would help? Um, I get, I used to get asked this a lot and I would – be so lost because I don't know I wasn't really confident in myself but I think just doing the little things and being repetitive with like the little things that you don't want to have to do every day Mm. like going to the gym like getting into a good routine which can be so hard and um you know everyone loves to have their little time off and to be social with your friends and like the hardest thing is socialising with friends who don't play sport because they don't really get it mm. and they don't get what it – like the sacrifices you actually have to take. But I think like you, you're allowed to have that time to, you know, just have that little party era or 
you know, don't go too crazy, but, you know, just have that little fun and downtime and then really when it matters, like, get into it and, like, yeah. stick to that routine. Um, I think it's all about balance there. I still still like to keep that balance in mm. my life, but just doing all those little one percenters that everyone hates to do, right? 100% and, like, and working hard. Yeah. And, like, not being scared to work hard. Yeah. Like, I – like when I was playing footy, definitely was not the most skillful. Hey, like, <laughs> like, like we were talking about it before the podcast, like looking at like old photos um, and like was not a skillful player like <laughs> at all. So I was just like, well, I just need to work harder than yeah. everyone else to try and get there. And that's, yeah. I think that's probably the only reason why I got to play great, to 100%. be honest. Like, and, and doing it time after time, year after year, you're going to get setbacks, you're going to get tough conversations as well. Yeah. But being around good crew, like being like, look at the team, like the Roosters and like even hanging around the, like the Chilla Roos and like the, the State of Origin girls, like you've got such a good network of girls around and now you get to train with them in the off season as yeah. well. Like you're building a little community where you yeah. can actually excel, yeah? Yeah, and it's just like setting yourself up with friendships for life as well. I think also being able to handle those tough conversations is such a reflection of the type of person you're going to be if yes. you can bounce back from that. And not just have a sook about it. I definitely had a sook about it. But, you know, having that resilience to bounce back from it and not letting it, like, overtake your life. Um, I also like to pride myself on being the player that people want to play with and not, like, against. Like, be that person that everyone wants to play with and have on their team because on and off the field having, like... That those good relationships with the people in your team because you never know, like, who's going to be with you, yeah. like, for the next 10 years. And it's such a cool, like, professional NRLW and NRL, it is such a special environment to be yeah. in. And, and when you're in it, when I was in it, you don't, you kind of take it for granted a little yeah. bit. Um, but you make so many amazing connections, like, I got, I got medically retired like a couple of years ago. I didn't, I wanted to play till I was 30, but the relationships that I made helped me propelled into all the things that I want to do now. Like yeah. there's no way that I could sit down and have vulnerable conversations with the best athletes in Australia if I didn't play professional rugby. Yeah. I don't think it would be relevant. I don't think, um, A, I wouldn't know them and B, I wouldn't be able to relate to them on a personal level. Yeah. And so it's cool that you're so young and you've got at least 10 years ahead of yourself well, you're going to make like so many good crew. Like even like our relationship wouldn't have, wouldn't have probably taken place if we didn't play footy, right? Yeah, 100%. And like you're in a pro- professional environment. Like even though I'm a part-time athlete, I'm around these girls more than I'm with my, like my mum and dad and even my boyfriend sometimes. Mm. So like why would you put yourself in a shit environment or make it a shit environment for yourself? Like if you don't like it, leave it. Yes. Or, you know, like work on things to make it better. Like you're only going to make – like your life will only be a lot worse if you're not trying to enjoy yourself while you're in it. And it's so hard to like fully appreciate it because training can be so tough and mentally draining and you want to snap at everyone. And, you know, if you guys played shit on the weekend, then you want to just rip everyone's head off. Like I've been there, like done that. But like knowing that – it's not everyone else's fault around you and just, yeah, just being that su- that good person in that good environment is going to make your life ten times better because you never know what doors are going to open up for you later on in life, like exactly like where you are now. Mm. Like so many doors have opened up for you and we get so many opportunities in this professional environment, which I've only just learnt like the last couple of years. We've had a lot of conversations off air about yeah. this, right? Yeah, and like... Millie Boyle was the prime – Millie Elliot now. Millie Elliot. Now. Yeah, yeah. Um, prime example of like telling me like so many doors will open up for you, Liv. So, you know, it's all about networking, not in the sense that you just want to get to know everyone but like keeping that good relationship with people. Mm. But it's just you get so many opportunities in this environment. It would be stupid to like let them go. Do you think about what you want to do life after footy? I moment? do. I do think about it, but I have no idea what I want to do. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep those options open and just, you know, just fully, just trying to do as much as I can, um, different things that I can within the club, um, in the job space. But, yeah, I actually have no, no clue yeah. whatsoever. And because footy's not forever and even women, 
we're we're not earning enough to just be thinking about footy. Mm. So, yeah, the brain's always ticking about it. But but it's good. But it's good that you're conscious of it because so many boys and girls would just play to play, right? And mm. they're not thinking about what's next. Like you don't know what's around the corner. Like it, like it could be tomorrow. It could be ten years. Like you have you have no idea. But being conscious of like yeah, I'm gonna try different things. I think that's the coolest way to look at it because like you said you know you don't know what's going to pop up yeah exactly would you do any stuff in the media space do you think I think so um I don't know this is my second podcast I feel like this is good but you're sp- <laughs> but you speak so well like even like we do a lot we did a lot of stuff with what ability and even this morning we did a few pieces of cameras like before we jumped in the ice bath but you speak so well and and for someone who's so young like at, when I was 22 years old there is no way that I'd be jumping probably not jumping on a podcast <laughs> and, and definitely not doing um, media engagements as well like I was the guy that was just like oh you at Keegs you're on media today I was like I don't want to do it I was like yeah. you get like Joe Rolls or Ryan James or whoever to do it but you speak so well so that could be something that you might lean into yeah well that's good to know I was like that as well my first um season at NRLW they would ask me to do interviews and I'd be like no nah. Get someone else. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Just rock up to training like a bit after once the media team had left or stuff like that. Um, but now, honestly, ever since Millie, she <laughs> it's told me she's just she's such a good person to chat to about yeah. like life after footy um, and just life in general. Um, but she was just like, you need to do it, and mm. it's just practice. Yeah. And so even stuff with what ability they, you know. They say like it's it's all good if you don't want to do it. I'm like, no, nah, I actually need to. <laughs> saying saying yes to things because yeah, like, you never know what like what door can open. Yeah, that, eh? just try and say yes to as many things as you can take on at mm. a time. Yeah, yeah, not overloading. Mm, um, sure. I'd love to chat around. Obviously, like you, we talked about work life balance, and we talked about like the imposter syndrome, and obviously this is a mental health and sport podcast. Um, I imagine there could be like a few like stresses that that go on in your life. What are some of the tools that you do or what are some of the things that you do to help de-stress or, or get away from the craziness? Yeah, well, it's honestly I feel like it's taken me a long time to sort of realise what works. When I was younger, I'd love to just hang out, go out, party with my mates. Yeah. It was such like a de-stressor at the time um, because I was 18. But now I've... Uh, obviously can't do that because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, a hangover lasts for about a month for me now. <laughs> we had a little throw up this morning. I did, I did. <laughs> After the gym session. <laughs> oh, oh, that was so first funny. First session back after New Year's and uh, it was a two-day hangover. Went to Wildlands, New Year's Eve festival <laughs> and – after the gym session this morning, couldn't keep the wheat bigs down. So <laughs> we, were, we were we were getting it, we we're at the coffee shop, and you're like, "Geez, like, I just threw up." <laughs> I was like, "Wait, what do you mean? I didn't think it was that hard." You're like, "Yeah, I feel lightheaded." <laughs> I seriously walked out of the session, and um, you're still chatting to the people at the gym, and I've I've gone so lightheaded, I couldn't even get words out. I felt so rude because I wasn't having a chat, and I was like, "I need to sit down." Keegs is like standing out front of his car and he's like, oh, what, you, what coffee, um, cafe should we go to? Like this one, I'm like, just text me. <laughs> is that why you went off? <laughs> yeah. And then I ran off and then I went behind the car and spewed and then went to the petrol station, got some petrol and then spewed again. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I'm, so f- I'm, I'm, glad we, um, I'm glad we did the ice bath before before the podcast because I think that kind of like oh, up it a actually bit. sorted me out <laughs> yeah but it was great but I don't drink to relieve my stress that's what I'm saying I like now. that you said that I like that you said that disclaimer <laughs> oh, that was just to hang out with the friends but um de-stresses you know, yes but now I I think just getting back into a routine I I don't really I've never realized like how much that shit works yeah and just having, I think being up on the Gold Coast really helps and being out of my hometown, it was, it was I love I love the Central Coast, but, you know, it's just the same, same shit every day. Yeah. So, um, and I wasn't really near the beach. I was like a 15 minute drive from the beach, which is really far for the Central Coast. So now I'm at North Burley, right across the road from the beach. I walk over to the beach like every day, go to the gym in the morning, Go to the markets on the Saturday. So like, wholesome. It's so it's so wholesome up here. So nice. It's everything you think about the Gold Coast, yeah. and I love it. Um, but even just like hanging out with my friends for a coffee, you yeah. know, and 
but I, I love my alone time. I think the hardest thing is trying to say no to friends sometimes yeah. because I have a lot of different friends in different friendship circles from different sports, school and just growing up and work and stuff. So trying to catch up with everyone, it's like it can be a lot at times. Um, I think that's why I enjoyed moving up here and not like knowing any like a lot of my friends yeah. um, just because I need that alone time and I'm in a hectic footy environment like all week even if I'm just training all week I, I just need some my own time yeah. at the beach that's what I love to do lay, lay lay in out. tan Take for a book about down. six hours yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get a bit of color yeah yeah we love that um before we wrap things up I I, I really want to talk about um uh players having kids like while while playing footy we we spoke about this a little bit before um before jumping on air like literally just before um Female sport, yeah. insane. Like it, the, the the growth that's happening at the moment and the eyeballs that are on and, and the peak time for a female player is probably between 18 and I'm guessing like mid-30s, yeah? Like yeah. Probably, and the, but that's also the biggest time for children. Yeah. Do you want to have kids while you're playing footy? Is that something you think about? Because obviously like you've got Shanice Parker, Corbin Baxter on your side who have had kids and have come back. Is that something that you think about a lot or often? I would love to have kids and then come back to footy, but it's such a scary thing. Yeah. And I think that would just be the next chapter of trying to get over my fear of like not being good enough to come back. Mm. And also like if you come back from footy, I want to still be playing reps. Yeah. Well, now I do. And like your position, they don't just hold it for you. Yeah. So we'll just wait till you come back. Oh, but like so, trying to work your way back into that would just be a whole other ball, like ball game. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's not enough information around coming back from pregnancy. There's always rehab about an ACL, but nothing about coming after giving birth. Mm. And like with Corby, I know she was working from day dot since she found out she was pregnant. Yeah. So she was just never skipped a beat and. She was, I think, off memory, she didn't have too much of a traumatic birth mm. um, because she had done it before with Carter. And um, so I think she felt a little bit easier going into this with Bodhi. And then when she came back, she was just out of playing out of her skin. Like she's playing so much better than when she, even before she was pregnant. I was, like, I was talking to Jess Surges about this before we did the podcast with, with Corbin. And she was just like, yeah. Um, she was running like pretty much not right up to pregnancy, but after having, I think, Bodie or Carter, Bodie, 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 Bodie yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like a couple, maybe a week, week and a half, she's yeah. doing like four, like 40 meter return yeah. sprint. And yeah. I'm like, what do you, I was like, how is that even possible? Like yeah. that's huge. But like, obviously she would have done so much work in the build up to get her body right because it's obviously going to be a big thing having, yeah. having a kid and mm. then coming back. But she, I was like, I asked her, I said, do you, did you always think you were going to come back? She's like, yeah. yeah. She, she knew she was coming back. Um, I think that was the biggest thing. Um, even Stranger was, was, he was like, he coming back? She's like, yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, I remember she was telling us about her 40 meter like runs that she was doing. And she's like, oh, they, but they weren't fast. I'm going, oh, I just can't even imagine running yeah. with like that big of a belly. Mm. Um, but she, yeah, she was just working hard from ever since she found out. But like doing it all on her own, I think she might've got in touch with Sammy Bremner because she had just did it previously. Yeah. But um, Sammy is a freak of a, like, athlete. Yeah. She is so fit. So I need someone who's a bit on my yeah. level. <laughs> level. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, they, they just work – they're working hard before they even find out they're pregnant. So, and, yeah. But then also, like, throw in – like, pregnancy is a complicated – Exactly. Regardless. Like, throw in having a C-section or a complicated yeah. traumatic birth. Like, that would add so much amount, more amount of pressure and maybe yeah. time in recovery. Like, yeah. And you said it perfectly, like there's not enough information at the moment, but I personally think the way that the female sport is going, especially in NRLW, AFLW, like there has to be more studies and there has to be more protocols, yeah. processes in place to help yeah, girls well, come back. I think that's the hardest thing for Corby coming back was there was no, or maybe it was Sammy, um, because I think Sammy was sort of, maybe the first recent one to do it, but yeah. there was no actual protocol for her coming back. Mm. And I think she just needed like a physio or something ridiculous to clear her. But 
Sammy, like, her fitness level is out of this room. Yeah. Like, th- through the fucking roof. Yeah. So she was like, I feel fine. So she could come back after. I think they might have been saying no, but you might have to fact check that. Um, but, yeah, like I said, there's not enough information. There's such a space that's needed because if you're having a traumatic birth or a C-section, like you said, or even I see some of my friends that are pregnant now and they've just found out and they're like vomiting, can't even get off the couch, haven't been able to eat. And they didn't even do an active session. And <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but they're not even athletes. Yeah. So imagine, imagine if I was to get pregnant and vomiting. Like I'll... It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I wouldn't be able to train. It's, I don't know. I think it's very, it's going to be so hard. And I, right now, I don't think I'll have kids until after footy. Yeah. um, Because I, there's not enough information for me to come back and play. Um, So it'll probably be like when I'm mid thirties, I reckon. My my mother likes to tell me I'm very fertile at a a late age. (laughs) Because she had us when she was like mid thirties and then had my little sister when she was 44. So yeah. she's like, you've got time, Liv, time is on your side. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, and, yeah. but also like, you don't know what, like what's around the corner like, exactly. and, and what, and what could pop up and, yeah. and you might pivot and change your mind. Like you, yeah. you it's, it's whatever. Yeah. And like the pregnancy policy is getting better. Now there's pretty sure the RLPA have brought in like, um, you can get like your eggs checked and stuff like that, which is so important. Yeah. I think, girls get on a lot of contraception like contraceptive for their like while they play I know I'm on contraceptive because like I don't want my period when I'm playing yeah so like that that like there's so many things that could make you infertile from that and having these things that are introduced is so important for us women I don't think anyone really realized like how like much that's needed for us um because there's so many side effects to being on like the pill the marina like the rod and, and stuff this is something that i am not educated in at yeah. all like, like, yeah. but like i i imagine that would be that would play a huge part yeah, yeah. like that like you talk about the like side effects of contraceptive right like that would be that could change the way you train yeah it affects hormones affects yeah. mood affects coming to training it would affect everything yeah it does and we i don't know if other clubs do it but we've got it really well at the roosters um our snc is jake callister it's izzy's husband yeah um but we fill out a wellness form Sick. um every day and it we have to like fill out um if we've what day we're on our period like on our menstrual cycle mm. and how we're feeling because your periods will affect the way you train. They affect the way you lift. Um, you're a lot stronger the week before your period and then like... Recovery time as well. Yeah. And then like during your period, like you will lift the shittest weights. Like I, I was in the gym and, you know, it, it can just be really terrible. And then you real, you're realising like, why am I doing so bad? Like you yeah. feel like you're declining in your training, but it's like, oh, hold on. You've actually just got your period. Part of the cycle. <laughs> yeah. Is there someone that you talk to about what um, method would be best for you? In, what in, terms of, in terms of like contraceptive, like whether it's a bar, whether it's marina, whether it's... Um, I, I've i had the marina in like the last four years and I like it because I don't get my period. I don't bleed. It just is really bad and I don't like the idea of it. But as an athlete point of view, I like it because I don't have to deal with that on game day. It's mm. such a big stress. Like they've just um, introduced it, the girls. I don't know if it's across all clubs, but I know the Roosters, we don't let wear white shorts anymore because yeah. of it, yeah. um, which is so good. But even just like the whole stress of having your period, it's so shit. Like yeah. you've got a million other things to worry about. You don't want to have to be worrying about your cycle. Mm. Um, so that's why I like it, having the marina. Um, but again, this could be making me so infertile, which is, there, is so but, scary. But is there is there someone that you can talk to or is there people that you can talk to to navigate that? Yeah, we've got our doctors, um, but I'm th- – yeah, I don't know. I'll probably have to have a chat with them soon because you can only have it in for five years. Yes. So I'll be getting mine changed like this year. So I don't know whether to take it out, yeah. sort my body out, but, you know, the – like it can backfire you can end up bleeding for the next six months yeah so i imagine and then getting pregnant 
Are they getting pregnant? <laughs> Are they getting pregnant? Then? I don't want You'll that. Be coming back, Corbin. What can we do? But I imagine this conversation here, most young female athletes would be thinking about this. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I do not have the answers, and I do not I have know. the tools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I did, but I just yeah. don't. Yeah. And it's such a space like that. I think. Um, there's a few, there's a lot of male coaches in the NRLW, which is great. Um, we we don't want like females just chucked into head coaching spot because no. they want more women in the space. It would be so amazing to have them there, but if they don't know, yeah. like we want the right person for the right job, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, but I think what they need, like men need to be able to coach women and this is such an important conversation they need to be able to have because I don't think like a lot of – coaches realise like how much your cycle can affect performance. Well, the best coaches aren't just great coaches. They're also really great with people. Like yeah. my one of my favourite coaches was Wayne Bennett and he was the best people person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, he could get the best out of you. He wants you to be a good person. He understand the boys. But navigating the female space, that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. And, and I think there will be some good female coaches coming through 100%. the ranks now because that's just time. Like yeah. it's just a time thing. Like yeah. imagine when you girls and the girls who are a little bit older who are retiring and then they – like imagine them stepping into the roles and they've had the last 10 years and that's just a time yeah. thing, yeah? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely just a time thing. But, uh, yeah, I think we've got to ride at the Roosters. Um, we're able to have those open conversations, which is why I just love it there. But, yeah. It's so it's so much harder to coach women than yeah. uh, what a lot of people think, because yeah. um, we're we're full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> it's a roller coaster. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a full roller coaster. Um, Liv, thanks so much um, for this conversation. Before we wrap things up, is there anything that you'd like to talk about? Is there anything that you'd like to mention? No, just thank you for having me. It's yeah. been really really fun. I've had um, I've had the best morning. Um, thank you. Thank thanks so much for jumping on. Um, I really enjoyed the topics that we've spoken about today. I think there's some really good golden nuggets in there for not only young girls coming through, but any athlete coming through. Um, I appreciate your time. I love the fact that we got to have a session and ice bath today. And I'm actually, I'm so excited to watch your career. Like we've, we've become friends over the last year or so. And um, I really appreciate your friendship. Um, yeah. I think it's really cool. Um, and I, yeah, I'm pumped to see the next like 10 years of footy for you. And even life after footy. Because I reckon yeah. you're going to kill it. You switched on, you're going to be good. So no, thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Keith.